A very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of Rumbles. My name is Kola Wale Akintoba. I guess on today's edition of the program is a human rights activist. He is the founder of Civil Liberties Organization, Seattle. He is a prolific writer on public issues and legal matters. He is a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, NBA. It's my pleasure to welcome on today's edition of Rumbles, Dr. Lisa Agbakuba, Senior Advocate of Nigeria. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for taking time out to talk Thanks. to us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me ask you to trace Nigeria's political journey for us, uh, especially from 1999 to date. Uh, give us your candid assessment, assessment of the state of Nigeria. It's a failed state. Completely. We've not moved anywhere. So 1999 comes along, we have democracy, all what we fought for, and the idea was to have what we call a liberal democracy, which means free press, vibrant media, political parties, not just one political party, mm -hmm. a vibrant civil society, active trade union. That's what makes up a liberal democracy, mm -hmm. where you have limited government, the notion of limited government, where there's no executive lawlessness and impunity. Unfortunately, I don't have to tell you that rather than have democracy, at best we would be described as a semi-democratic state right. or an autocratic state, neither of which is good for the Nigerian experience. Mm -hmm. So you've had two major political parties. In a round robin situation, so PDP 16 years, nice APC, and they want to stay for another 16 years. But if you go on the ground, I just came from the economic summit. You have all these foreigners, graphs, you know, computers, GDP, everything sounds so rosy. But go on the ground. If you want to know what's happening, ask Nigerians, ask the drivers, ask, ask the cooks. They will tell you what democracy is about. So Nigeria is a failed state. So in, in other words, uh, there is a disconnect between the government and the government. How did Nandi, those, those, how did Nandi Kano come about? Mm -hmm. A guy who was a nobody. He comes from nowhere. Because of, of the space created. You have five southeast governments. And they don't see what's around them. They don't see the poverty. So of course Nandi Kano comes in. This is millions and millions of unemployed youths who are angry. Angry at them, who, who, at, the, at, the, at the process, and he takes them. Mm. Nigeria's problem is unaccountable government. So then Abuja, in a confined space mm. where they discuss and share money, Nigerians have no recognition of what goes on in Abuja. If Abuja were to disappear by volcanic corruption, Nigerians would notice it. So it's that bad. I personally don't feel the presence of government. I don't. My mother-in-law passed on, on Saturday. We went to hospitals around, no morgues functioning. I mean, can you imagine that? But I was so shocked. And I was asking my brother, if this can happen to people like us, what about those below? So there is extreme disaffection. Extreme. Unfortunately, the absence of the vocal advocacy group is a problem. That's the problem. When we were fighting the military, there was a line. So it was pro-democracy, the actors and the soldiers. So whether you were Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, whatever, that was the line. Mm. Now that it's all about civil politics, there's no line. So these guys use ethnicity, religion too tear us apart, okay. whilst they stay together. They jump from party to party. PDP guys, half the PDP guys are in APC. If APC is going down now, they create another party. And they all work together. Because in their common interest, they have public power okay. and access to unaccountable money. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. How do we begin to bridge this divide? That is a massive challenge. It's time I am cracked my skull, how can we absolutely get out of this mess? What I call the conspiracy of the political elite. And honestly, I have no answers. I don't have an answer. With the benefit of hindsight, 
how did we get it wrong and when? It depends what what it depends on <laughs> it depends on which which time you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I can say nineteen fourteen. Got it wrong. Nation was a mistake. Uh, 1960, independence came too easily. There wasn't any struggle. So we didn't shape a clear political agenda. We didn't, we didn't think through where we were going. And of course, there was the coup in 1966. And then we came back to 1999, the civilian government. Mm -hmm. So all of these epochal periods, we never got it right. But one I think I regret personally as you know one of those pro democracy activists that pushed these guys out. We made a fatal mistake. Whether if we had entered politics in 999, would have been the difference, I don't know. But I think somehow I think we would have. But we had a big meeting in Ghana's house and we said, no, our job is done. Maybe if we had gone on to contest political power, it would have been different. Because then it was very easy. But by 2003, the politicians had muddied the waters and it became difficult to get in. Which is why I wrote a passenger letter. Which was part of the frustration that I felt about it. I said, General Passenger, you guys ought to be thinking about living a legacy. So since it's so difficult for young people to get in, why don't you, in collaboration with your fellow elder statesman, say to your generation, enough. The one legacy you can leave, General Bassinger, is to assist Nigerians have a generational shift so that new actors, the Macrons of this world, the Trudeaus of this world can come in. There are lots of them. But nothing good will come out of all these old people. Nothing. So I'm skeptical. So that's the only glimmer of hope. But what's just replied when I met him was, even the Queen of England hasn't abdicated him. <laughs> so you see? So it's not easy to leave power. So mm -hmm. we're, in a, we're in a bind. I think I'll come with certain answers, but they're not easy. No, no answers yet. No answers yet. Well, let's talk about this new generation of leaders. If there's no confidence in, in, in the younger ones, how Who says they, there's no confidence? There's confidence. Well, well some, some, some did say that there was no confidence. They, they didn't have confidence in, in some of Who this. didn't have? Chief Bissell uh, recently was talking about uh, the issue of uh, new leaders emerging. Mm -hmm. And he talked about the youths. Yes. Now, how do, we, how do we begin to bring them to the forefront? If you have not in the space, the Chief Bissell Kondi had to be there. He was given the opportunity. He came there very early. He's, I don't know, it's probably about 80, I don't know. Mm. What, what is he doing there? I just saw Michael Helsentine on TV yesterday. I even thought he was dead. Mm. He was Deputy Prime Minister of the, U of the UK about 30 years ago. Right? So these guys should leave us alone. They cannot say uh, no confidence in the youth when they are blocking the space. You got to go away first. They talk about experience. What experience? <laughs> when uh, our law started, how old was he? He, the passenger, that retired from the army as a full general at 42. What experience did he have when he started? What about Ojuku, who was 29? Yeah. So it's just a, a, a good way to, for them to come to be relevant. They ought to just say, let's allow the youths. Okay. And let's see what will happen. Mm -hmm. I can assure you that brilliant guys are bound. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's um, look at your your submission at the second plenary session of the outgoing um, uh, Ghana Association meeting, which you attended uh, not too long ago. You, you were looking at Nigeria's underdevelopment and you, you traced that to incompetent leadership. Yep. What about the followership? The followership requires leadership. You can't blame the followership if the leadership, leadership, it means that they lead and we follow. So the leadership should be smart. I agree that you can put some blame on the followership, but not in a situation where you don't have a democratic space, democratic government. A liberal democracy, the followership is strong because they can deal with unaccountable governments. 
But here, even you guys in the media, how many of you are brave? How many? How many? You got okay. Well, don't need to be not here. It's fine. But what about the critical issues, like uh, uh, Richard Sucker when he when he interviewed a passenger, put him on the on the, on the spot? Because you also need that. You also need adverts. That's the truth. So the media itself is careful. The only media house that tried collapsed. Next, it collapsed. So the problem we have is a very serious one. We would uh, labor strong for another week, and so on and so forth. So followership, yes, I wish it was active. I wish it was more active. But what about the leadership? When you say you want the Nigerian president, you present a manifesto, a campaign manifesto, that you do A, B, C, D. You go there, you don't do anything. Look at Mrs. Buhari complaining about no syringes in the Aso Rock Clinic. Why didn't they fire the, 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 the head of the clinic? So yeah, followership, I, I wished followership were you know, more, more, vibrant. more vibrant, 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 but it's not. So yes, okay, some part of the blame goes there. But essentially, now in my state, Anambra, all those guys are frightened. Peter B was in Abga, he is now over in, in PDP. He brought out um, Obaze to run for governorship four years ago under Abga, dumped him, took uh, Mr. Obiano. Now he has dumped Obiano and he has taken, uh, he has taken um, back uh, Obaze. So you begin, you begin to wonder what's going on here. So I said to myself, what, what can I do as an Anambra person? Can I go there and start shouting? Do I have the money? They will just share 2020 naira to people and those are the guys who go and vote. Why can't you contest that stuff? I don't have them, I don't have the resources. Mm. That's the problem. What about goodwill? Hmm. Goodwill gets you nowhere. Mm. Ghani, when he advised us not to go into politics in 1999, and he was our guy, and we listened. By 2003, he told me, Abaku, that's why he calls me. So Abaku, we made a big mistake. Oh, we should have done this thing. So he formed the NCP. He thought Goodwill would take him there. When he lost so woefully, he cried like a baby. Mm -hmm. I was there. Cried. After all that I've done, said, oh, God, yeah. but that is not enough. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. You don't have any structures. You have no structures. So that's the problem. Party politics is such an intensely financially consuming affair. I hope you know you have to penetrate all the words. Right? All the words. You have to have the structures. The church, the mosques, all these are the structures that you have to feed. Mm. Yeah, the good will tell all this is a nice man. I'm trying to go with the talks is in Lagos. But he's here on the ground here. Yeah. So I can't do it. I don't kid myself. I can't do it. That's why guys of good will, Pat Tony, we can win. But it's the bad guys that win mm. because they know what to do. And when they get there, they're completely unaccountable to the people that put them there. Mm. Because the people that put them there were bright. That's the problem. Mm. If you were you were one of those who who stood in the forefront of trying to form democracy in this country pre nineteen ninety nine. Yes. If you had the opportunity uh, mm -hmm. to rewrite things, what would you change? What nine ninety nine? Because clearly, although we were small, we were cohesive and we took the political space. Clearly, we took it to the point that Mr. Tambo Becky came to us to say this new democracy will not happen without you guys. Could you come and see me in Abuja? We'll tell him go away. Because Ntaba Mbeki used to be here as a ANC ambassador. Mm -hmm. He made the sacrifice to come to Lagos Airport on his way back to South Africa. We were going to meet him there. Take this opportunity and refuse. That for me was the most grievous error we made. Because had we taken it, we could have easily. In fact, the international community made clear that as part of the rapprochement, Two things needed to happen. We needed to make sure that someone from the southwest was the president mm -hmm. because of Adiola accommodate the human rights people. Mm -hmm. The AD, the AD, the AD was the vehicle. The AD did not qualify nationally under the constitution. Okay. It was registered. We foolishly declined. The younger part of the pro democracy movement declined to join. But the most senior part about that's how I am good. They saw the opportunity and went in. And went in. Who were the ones who made the new uh, governor? Who were the ones? 
he did, he did, he, did, he lost to to Fonsha Williams. Mm. But he said no, must be Tunebu because he was one of us. Mm. Now Tunebu took the space and at least did something in Lagos. So you can imagine if I went to Onambra Governor, I obey to Russian State, that that that, he could have been different. I think mm. that's my biggest regret. Mm. Let, let's uh, we'll come back to some of these issues uh, much later. But uh, earlier in one of your submissions, you talked about the emergence of Nande Kano. Yes. Um, where do you stand in this debate over the issue of secession? Oh, no, not for secession. I was a Biafran soldier, so I, mm -hmm. I would never, ever, ever want secession for many reasons. First, I don't want to be in a small country. I don't want to be in the Republic of Biafra that is landlocked. One, two. A big country, Nigeria, is better economically. So I think there will be more space. Three, we can actually resolve Namdi Kano's concerns. I have no problem with him talking about self-determination. He has a right to do so. What I disagree with is the method. I mean, you can see that it's not easy to have succession anyway. So that would in Spain or the Kurdish people. So what will resolve this problem? is a rebalanced federation. We have 98 items of power in the constitution. The federal government of Nigeria exercises all of them. 68 exclusive to the federal government. 30 shared with the states, but the federal government has first bite, meaning that there's only one government. So I want to see an active local government, 774, we have to be active and deal with local things like collecting refuse, making sure the streets are clean, that's the job of the local government, not the state government. So when you rebalance the federation, I think we can achieve what we popularly call restructuring. Mm -hmm. And I think that way Nigeria will begin to, you know, this lopsidedness mm -hmm. will balance out. The federal government will do a lot less mm -hmm. and it will, it will become more efficient. Mm -hmm. And the issue of competence will, will, will come to the forefront. Right. Right. Okay, some say we need to restructure our mind. Yes. Um, yes. Others say we need to go back to the regional system of government yes. to achieve some of this. Yes. Um, for us to move forward. Yes. On your part, you were quoted as saying restructuring is not a roadmap to federalism. Yes. Um, how so? And what do we need to do yes. uh, to move forward as one indivisible nation? Yeah, I got tired of the buzzword restructure. I need mean, everybody restructure. So I said, what does it mean? Where's the blueprint? We need to have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. We just talked about restructuring the mind is part of the process. There's no point in restructuring Nigeria into regions and you carry the inefficiencies and corruption down there. Right. So we must first say how can we become a liberal democracy and how can we limit the power of the, the government. Mabeza calls it the notion of limited government. It means you need rule of law, strong institutions, these are very important components. Now, when you put all that in place, then you've got to say, what exactly do we mean by restructure? And the first point to note is that whilst the South is generally in favor, the North is not. It's something we have to accept. But why do you think the North is because North, supposed to restructure? Because North doesn't have oil. They don't have anything. So you, in the South, you have everything. And you want to restructure and take away the money by sharing. So, that, so it's for us. And that's why I say I'm tired of hearing on Haneze, you know, leaders of thought, going to hotels, issuing communiques, calling the media. That's not restructure. I am a Haneze man. You, the Yoruba elder, we know what we want. Mm. So why don't we have a blueprint? Go across the north and then engage them and then find what's the challenge. Where, where are the problems? So the South wants as part of restructuring a new constitution. Referendum. The North doesn't want a new constitution. They don't want no referendum. So we say, okay, where do we meet? No, I think the meeting point could be that the National Assembly simply amends the constitution. We don't necessarily have to have a new constitution. I would go for a new one. But if our brothers in the north don't want it, they ain't gonna have nothing. So you see, you must find a middle way. That's what I meant by, you know, complete restructure. Right. Right. Uh, let's go back to this debate on 
the high college and uh, tell us what your view was about where the governors in the southeast stand, where Hanese stands, and how we can bring all these differences together mm. to move forward mm. in that part of the country. Well, the problem starts from the disconnection I, I spoke about when the governors did nothing for the people. So the people have been disadvantaged. Yeah. If I went to court on grounds that the Southeast has been completely marginalized and excluded. That is, that is clear. How that posed the problem in the East was hunger and disease, no jobs. The other day I drove, when I was going to an Anise meeting from Anisha to Enugu, I couldn't believe the state of the roads in utter chaos. Mm -hmm. They say that uh, um, General Buhari hasn't appointed enough evils. What, what President Clinton did, the same evil politician sat in Abuja and did nothing. The finance I of this world did nothing. So that's not, the, that's not the, what it is. I'm not looking for anybody's charity. I'm just looking for equity. Fix the roads. Do the things you are doing elsewhere. Then the can the kind of possibility will not, not be there. Mm. But when guys, like in my town manager, people get up, they don't have anything to do. Mm. So yeah, have you heard that there's somebody down the road there who is offering free lunch and, and 2,000 air in the flock. So that was the problem. The fact that the political class of the Southeast stock completely marginalized their own people. That's the first problem. Second problem was the federal system completely marginalized the very Southeast people. So what do you expect? Mm. They'll be angry and then they can come and use them. Mm. That's it. Let, let's look more closely at this issue of uh, marginalization. Um, Chief Addison was speaking, we said not too long ago, and he, he did say that the egos are their own fatal enemies. How do you respond to no, that? No, that's not true. That's not true. The DNA of Nigeria is simple. The DNA of Nigeria consists of six geopolitical zones. We have only five states in, in our own zone. And they know there are seven. The Northwest, seven. So again, don't forget that money is shared on the basis of states right. and local governments. Right. So we're getting less. That alone tells you we're getting less. The Niger bridge there is, 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 is quaking, mm -hmm. ready to fall. Anytime a politician wants to deceive us, they come there and turn the sword. Once they've taken our votes, they run away. So there is no question that we are in. Yeah, okay, partly, part, part of it is the fault of evil uh, political leaders. But there is something. I don't want to say deliberate, because I don't understand why it should be deliberate. But something is wrong when the East is excluded. Mm -hmm. In in a, in, in a Jonathan's time, I would say marginalization. But now, it's exclusion. The recent appointments in the NPC. Mm -hmm. Not a single. You, you've taken the federal government? I've taken Not a single liberal man. Yet there are 11 northerners. Mm -hmm. how, how would I feel? I would feel hurt. I would feel like maybe I should follow Nandikan. So they give you, my point is that they give you the can the the fuel the fuel to say where are you they, they put you there. You know the thing about these appointments is as if when you if you put my brother the woman into an embassy, I'll I'll get a contract. I'll get nothing. When Ekwemi was vice president, in order to lure us to vote for the MPN, which I did not, they put a port in Anisha in nineteen. 78. Mm. From that day, 78 to today, the port has never worked. Never. From time to time, they'll issue a contract, billions, refurbish it. So, how, how would I feel? Mm. This is the problem. So, if we want to have Nigeria work, it is not to say that we are our own enemies, it's to look at the injustice in the system. There's a lot of it. So but do you, do you think there's any, any the needed cohesion within the the Ohanese in the book, for instance, the umbrella body of the English? Mm, it's better now to propel. Yeah, it, I think I think it can still be a lot better. Mm. But with uh, Chief Mudo now president, mm. it's a lot. Before it was just a, 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 a cabal of traditional actors who, who had no clue what to do. Mm. But I wish to see some stronger cohesion mm. on the part of Ohanese. 
on the part of the forum of Southeast governments, right. so that they can make they can make demands. Right. Yeah, can make demands. So we, will, we will not support you guys, federal government, if you do not give us our due. Mm. That that is the duty of our leaders mm. in the Southeast. Mm. Okay, by trying to raise some of these issues, uh, like you said earlier, you're in court against the federal government. Yes. Uh, regarding the underdevelopment of the Southeast. Yes. The demands are that the Niger Delta Bridge should be repaired or yes. anyone built, yes. and two additional states um, to be added to, to the Not equalized, but, right. but to, to create the balance. The balance, yes. yes. Do, do, you see, do you see any future in, in terms of what you are requesting for? I haven't seen. Your, your demand? I haven't seen. The case I filed is seven years old, for mm -hmm. instance. So I haven't seen anything. But what I have seen is a new uh, advocacy around restructuring. Because that's the same thing. So there's a political process to, to rebalance. There's a legal process. I'm pursuing the legal process. So happily, the political process has, has caught on fire. Right. Now what I want to see is our political leaders particularly of the South, mm -hmm. understanding that in order to get a balanced federation, we've got to be extremely diplomatic and careful and take on board the fears and concerns of the North. Because if you talk about restructuring and devolution of powers, so we have 90% of our revenue coming from hydrocarbons. How do we deal with that problem? I was in the National Assembly, sorry, in the National Cup Confab. 2014 was a huge problem. How it's a it's a practical problem that you must put on the table to say, okay, so I'm I'm from the north, you are from Niger Delta. So you say, so you want all your oil? What about us? Because right now the oil goes into the traditional account. So already you can see loss of revenue. So, okay, I'm going to agree. Mm -hmm. So you must find a way to accommodate their concerns and fears. That, I think, is what's missing in the discussion. Recently, the talking about political realignment, political solutions to some of these issues, the Southeast government and the South South government came together uh, to form an alliance of restructuring. Um, objective is to create an inter-regional cooperation and integration in, other, in a bid to accelerate the development of these two zones. Um, how feasible do you think this is? Um, when you put into context the, the, the political differences? Mm, there is going to always be political difference. What's important is to find what is common. That's it. You know, we're, not, we're different. Uh -huh. So that's why we say, uh, what's our national anthem, the old one? Um, says something like, you know, in, 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 uh, about our, our unity in diversity. In diversity. Mm -hmm. We are different. You, you are different from your wife. But well, you have to find common ground. So in the, in the night, my wife doesn't like uh, lights on, TV. I have to compromise. I can say no. It's my room. Okay. You know what? Or you move to the next or move room. to the next room. Go to the other room. So life is about compromise. Right. The kids are all fighting. So, so what is the problem? So you, you look, look for a middle. You look for a middle. That's what's missing. Not the South, South, South is governors having an alliance to do what? Mm. The South already agrees on restructuring in, 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 in the broad sense. What they need to do is to look, fine tune it, then I will take in, carry the discussion to the North. If we want Nigeria to move forward, we must pace with the North. So, but they had, why? This no, we keep begging them. But you have to. Otherwise, then. The statement of the president that the unity of Nigeria is, you know, unquestioned, for me, is questionable. Nothing says I must. Why, why do you say? Are you not married? You are. Okay. Must you live with your wife? If you don't agree, if it becomes unbearable, you go away. Mm. Uh -huh. So I have lived with my wife for forty years because we found ways and means of working together right. in peace and harmony. Mm. But if the thing becomes wahala, it is not working. So, so, madam, please, it's not working. Okay. Let's just agree to the guy. Why not make you? Then both of us have to compromise. He said, okay, you know what? Stop drinking. I don't. You drink too much. Cut your drink. I said, okay, but you go out to weddings too much. 
you stay with me a bit. Uh -huh. That's the compromise. But if nobody wants to shift ground, <laughs> the people in the south south don't want to shift ground, uh -huh. the people from the south don't want to shift ground, the northerners don't want to shift ground, then we will not work. You know, 50 years you asking me the very questions you're asking me today. Mm -hmm. So we have to shift ground. Mm -hmm. That's key mm -hmm. for Nigeria to move forward. Mm -hmm. Come to shift ground. Okay. The, 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 let's look at the south and even other states, other regions of, of this country. How do the states begin to look in instead of de depending on what comes from the center? They can't, now they are shackled. If you, don't, you guys don't know the power of the constitution, mm. they are complete. Look at my governor. He can't make use of the water mm. in all nature because it's federal control. You know, there I saw one director from the Federal Ministry of Aviation he came to inspect the airport in Oweri. And so, with, and with the governor there. Oh gosh, what is the federal government business with an airport in uh, Oweri? So when the enabling environment shackles the states, many things happen. First, no spirit of enterprise. Second, dependence. So it is easier for the government to say, I think this one is too much. He runs to Abuja every month, takes his own share, comes here, chops his own, shares for others, and goes to sleep. Meanwhile, uh, on Duikiti. They have one of the largest vitamin reserves in the world. In uh, Enugu, one of the largest coal reserves in the world. Under the Onicha belt, there's a lot of a lot of oil. But the federal government owns everything. And they can't do it efficiently. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. So that's why the restructuring thing will unleash the energies that is now crushed. That's what, that's the way to go. The federal government needs to back off. And allow the states to jump. Few states are viable, like Lagos, because there's enterprise here. Mm. Most states are not viable. Mm. They're all broke. Mm. The federal government of Nigeria is technically broke. Every day they are borrowing money. So one day the thing will finish. So it's better, it's best for us all to come to our senses and say, this model isn't working. We need to do something new. And the only way is for the federal government to get the hell off our backs and stay in Abuja and look after foreign affairs, defense some of the things common to all, but the things internal to the geopolitical zones should be left for them to deal with. Uh, look at Fashola running around the whole of Nigeria to fix power. Uh -huh. It's not possible. Mm. Why can't you just make all the states responsible for power? Why? It's simple. These things are so simple that a beggar's belief what is not being done. But you know why it's not being done? The billions. It's a billion dollar corruption business. That's why. Who will give up power when there's money in it? Nobody will give up. So we must really push. And I'm very sorry that there's no strong civil advocacy on this. Kill the march, kill the streets. Force the government to, to listen. But right now the discussion is all gentlemanly. You go to one hotel, have... I keep laughing when I see it on TV. Go to the hotel in Nevada, have a meeting. At the end of which they read the, read the communique. Mm -hmm. How will that change anything? But if all these old men who said they like power and were useless were to come out on the streets, go to a coal bridge, sit on it, mm -hmm. cripple Lagos, Abuja will go here. So we need a more dynamic engagement with the issue of restructuring. If you just join us, our guest on today's edition of Rumbles is Dr. Lisa Bakuba, senior advocate of Nigeria and legal practitioner. Stay with us. Welcome back in Silver Rumbles on Galaxy Television, and our guest is still Dr. Lisa Bakuba. Uh, so let, let me ask you to, I'm going to take you back a bit, uh, back to the, this discussion on iPod. iPod. And um, the, the group was proscribed, and uh, the army declared that it was a terrorist group. What are, what are your thoughts on this? Mm, this was wrongly done. It was a um, sledgehammer attack on the fly. <laughs> probably done. If the federal government of Nigeria has proper intelligence estimates, they will know that IPOP is just a rap tag army of un unemployed youths, and police action would have been enough. So I, I disagree with the deployment of troops. And then look at the name chosen, Python 2. Why? Why that, why that kind of horrible name? Police action would have sorted it out. Proscription, yes, maybe, 
But the president first in the prescription, but he has no power to do so. The South is governor is followed by also prescribing. But the only person that can prescribe is the judicial officer. So the whole thing was messed up. But anyway, whatever. That's now by the way. That's by the way, that's sorted. And I understand that Nandikan is has been given right of safe passage. So it's probably in the UK. So that is yesterday's story. Today's story is that as IPOP has departed, people are still there. Hungry, dispossessed, diseased, mm. no job. How do we deal with that problem? In order to avoid another IPOP. Book around is the same tra- narrative. Mm. The book around, book around thing, when the bishop told me the story, I said, ah, you're right, you know. So book around people see that all these Western style gov- governors are all corrupt. So they, 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 could, they easily penetrate the minds of the less privileged. The less privileged. Look at the people. Let us show you our own. I can't see how anybody would, would pick a gun and say, I want to kill myself. But the narrative was there. So the narrative of IPOP is the same as um, Boko Haram. Mm. So we need our leaders to understand that they need, they need to do the right thing, which is to discuss how Nigeria can be a great country, how Nigeria can be one of the large, most industrialized in Africa. And things are working. There's electricity, there are jobs, enterprise, free press, all of the things that create a liberal democracy. That's what I, I, I'd like to see. But as I say, you said, is it this year who said, said something? Mm-hmm. And so I say back to him. You guys can, will never be able to perform. So what you ought to do, and when I say Bisa Conde, I refer to that group of elders. Go behind and help build a good country. That's what you ought to do. Because when Awala was premier here, he was in his forties, and he's still regarded as one of the Nigeria's best politicians. He wasn't an old man. So give space to the young guys to show what they can do, and then you advise them. If you feel they don't have the experience, that's the pathway for Nigeria. Well, the the, the issue of uh, corruption comes up. Uh, you were talking about the past sector earlier, and and the reasons why nobody would want to give up that sector mm. corruption. Mm. Now, what are your thoughts on, on the fight against corruption under the present administration? They have no clue what they are doing. No clue. They, they, they how do you say it? The spirit is in the right place. So President Buhari, who is said to be straight as an arrow, has shown us that he's concerned. But that's not enough. Let's go to the strategy. I don't see any strategy. All right, who will you fight? You arrest somebody, and then you put the burden on the fight for corruption on EFCC. But go and look at EFCC officers, Tatars. You say, are these the people who are going to fight corruption? They don't have it. They don't have the tools. Then let me take my own special field, prosecution. So you get a lawyer, Mrs. Sarida Waziri, contacted me when I was MBA president to do a case and handle for the fees. I said, I can't do. Let me go and speak. I can't. I'm a lawyer. It's not charity. Where is the legal fund? How much do they have in their bag? They don't have money. And then you think you will fight someone who is corrupt, who has billions, who can get a lawyer. They, 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 everybody under the constitution is entitled to a defense. So we don't do any wrong by charging high fees. So a lawyer charges 200 million from a corrupt person. Then the EFCC pays their prosecutor 1.5 million. You think there's been a result? There's been a result. So the strategy on corruption, the noise about it is good. The philosophy of the president is good, but he needs to back it up. He needs to back it up. He needs to fund the EFCC. He needs to forget when you see them in the media wearing that they are red flag. It's rubbish. Go to the offices. No generator. The one here is terrible. Mm-hmm. So we need to see. You must commit money to the fight on corruption because you are dealing with a mafia. Guys who have trillions, they can meet and say, you know what? These are the jokers. We will keep this case in court ten years. And they have the money. Or more. Or more. They put aside 
one trillion mm. because they, it is in their interest. And they were laughing. So you have seen that money. Let's see. So the fight on corruption requires funding, serious funding. Mm. The, the, one, the one I liked was this whistle blow, blow thing. Why, why did they do it? Why are people blowing whistle? Because you think the guy I like you. Because I know I'll get something. But you said, you know, anybody who knows who has stolen money, please report to us. Nobody will talk. There's a particular person. The place he packed the money. No amount of EFCC operatives and intelligence That's would have found it. But when they say, look, if you tell us, we'll give you. Somebody knows that the man has been coming every weekend to, to put money. But they will get in his own job. Mm. That's the way it is. Mm. You have to have a strategy. Mm. There's no strategy. Mm. A lot of the legal side. No. Mm. So the intent is good, but what's playing out is not good. Mm. It's, it's also selective. Right. The SGF stole money. Nothing. You know he stole money. Why are you looking at me? He stole so, money. So, so we get. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, wasn't he suspended? You know, I, do you know what he said? When they asked him, this country is terrible. He said, Mr. SGF, after a FCC meeting, who was going out? He said, yeah, what can you say about uh, your suspension by the presidency? Which presidency? Can you imagine that? The SGF. So you can see, as far as it's concerned, like, so how will I feel mm. watching it? So, oh, so this APC man is getting away, but all the PDPTs, you are catching them. So it then, it get, it then creates a warped impression. And once emotions come into this corruption thing, it collapses. So some, some look at uh, uh, corruption laws and, and say that they, they're, they're quite lenient in terms of what, what you get for, for being corrupt. And also that um, the, the, the issue of plea bargaining in, in resolving some of these things. Mm. Where do you stand with this? Plea bargaining is very important, it's a powerful tool. Plea bargaining doesn't mean that uh, if you stole one billion, then the judge will say, okay, I, I'll, I'll put you in jail for three weeks. And plea bargaining. Plea bargain in its correct sense punishes you without a trial and then reduces your sentence. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if it's a 10 year sentence and you save the state scarce resources, mm -hmm. you could get five years. Is that what's happening in Nigeria? No, it's not happening now. They, right. they, use, they use the top money now. Mm -hmm. It's been abused. But the, I'm talking about the proper context, mm -hmm. it's, a good, it's a good one. But it will save time. And I also like that idea that the president introduced of if you surrender we, we, we forgive because a lot of money came in that way a lot of money the compromise principle what i would have wanted to know are who are those who surrendered they should be they should be should have been shamed the name should be yes and published but generally the anti-corruption program as an aspirational uh, campaign promise is working but the practicality of it is terrible but let, let, me, let me also ask you to, to look at the issue of recovery groups yes. and what it's been used for. Here it's been used to fund the budget and no so, some other things. I have no idea. Uh, what, what should this be directed at uh, in terms of bringing development to Nigeria? EFC has three functions. Personally, I disagree that EFC should, should have three. Investigation, prosecution and then asset recovery. Mm -hmm. The standard practice is that EFC focuses only on investigation. Attorney General's office focuses on prosecution. There is another uh, uh, agency dealing with how to manage the recovery route. Mm -hmm. Accounting to Nigerians for it. I don't know how much they recovered, where it has gone, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. So that's also uh, a weakness on the part of the of the program. It's so opaque. You can't tell what has been recovered. Just say, you have said they've recovered 10 houses, 55 houses. They keep juggling figures, but there's no coherence. So we need to have that. But if what they've recovered goes to fund the budget, then that's fantastic. But God, because we have, a, we have a massive budget deficit. So we have 7 trillion, but we can only fund the budget by 3 trillion. So there's a lot of gap. But we need to know exactly how much money is coming in. Where is it going to? What, one of the clearest examples of how the government was transparent was the Sukuk Fund, where they raised 100 billion. We all saw the check. It was handed to Fashola. That's how it should be. So you have confidence. Yeah. Now I have no confidence in how the FCC is recovering and accounting. 
let, let, let's um, look at uh, some of some of our issues. Um, you, you were part of the uh, 2014 um, national conference. Yes. So far, we've had about four, four national conferences yeah. with no implementation of any of the recommendations. Absolutely. Uh, how, how, what? Looking back at 2014, mm. what were the key issues raised, the key agreements, and what some of the things that we can take from that to to resolve some of these issues uh, confronting us as a the, the key agreement was regionalism. Mm. That was what everybody agreed, mm. although it took a war. Mm. The one where there was a challenge was what units should be the federating units. Should it be the regions or the states? Now, there was a lot of division. So that, if I had a chance to say, all right, look, what can we do? I would say, let's start the discussion from there. A boy in Enugu, even Lagos, they didn't want regionalism. They preferred the federating into the states. And that's neither here nor there. The, another model was, if, this, if the regions will not be uh, political units, they could become economic units. So you could you could constitutionalize the geopolitical zones. Because right now it's just something that Dr. Kweme created and became very, you know, valuable in you know political administration of Nigeria. Right. But you can constitutionalize it and then say to any group of states, it's up to you to manage your your economic region the way you please. If for instance you want only one chief judge for Southwest Nigeria, it's your choice. So that's part of the freedom. Those who say no, we want it to be state, state, state. It's up to you, but you will fund the the political process in your state. So that was the broad takeaway. And I think if we start from there, we got, then the other difficult question was oil. Eventually, what was agreed was that oil would be set aside as a special resource belonging to the Federation. But to compensate the oil-bearing states, they will increase their allocation from 13 to 25 percent. They requested 50, but after hard bargaining, it came to 25. Then there will be a sunset clause. I can't remember, I think it was 20 years, after which it will revert fully, by which time other states or regions would have developed their own resources. So really, the whole thing was agreed. Really? Huh? Go ahead. Yeah, it was agreed. But, unfortunately, President Jonathan, we, we didn't know that he was using it for <laughs> political purposes. Right. Uh, and, of course, if you go back to passenger zone, dot them. If you go back to IBB, continuation office. So, none of the four uh, conferences came from proper motivation. So we got the, the motive was wrong. Wrong. We just convened us, we talk, we dump the report and move on. Mm -hmm. So I hope, and but unfortunately, Buhari himself has said he won't look at it. Mm -hmm. Which I think is what has given rise to this, you know, agitation for resource for restructuring. Mm -hmm. I guess on today's edition of Rumbles has been Dr. Ulisa Bakuba, senior advocate of Nigeria and former president of the Nigerian Bar Association. My name is Kola Oliakintaba. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.